Hi everyone, this is uh, Andy Emerson Advocate. Uh, this is my YouTube channel. And uh, today I have a very interesting friend. What happened is uh, we are like totally in a different uh, in a different uh, part of the uh, globe now. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm in Singapore and you are in? Which country are you in now? In Chile. I'm Chile, 12 hours different. Here is oh 10 my, in the morning, imagine. Oh my God, thank you so much because it's like 10 p.m. now. So it should be about, is it 10 a.m. over there now? Yeah, 10 in the morning. It's 12 hours different. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Thank you so much. Not, not that bad, not that bad, okay? Uh, so maybe without further ado, uh, without me uh, saying too much, maybe I'll let him introduce himself. And uh, maybe you can tell us your name, uh, what company you represent, and uh, what do you do? Yeah, great. Thank you, Andy. Uh, my name is Christian Gallardo. Uh, today, I'm working in, in a full time, let's say, with my agency, uh, Pulso Line. Uh, we help company in marketing and sales uh, help them how to go local is basically the, the motto uh, of my agency in order to take it out all the friction in sales and marketing customer support uh, the main market for us is uh, uh, Europe uh, Latin America and now getting close to Asia um, my main can I say expertise is focused on business development e-commerce uh, sales uh, marketing online I see thank you so much um I'm very uh, honored to be uh, invited by uh, Christian to his uh, one of his event. What do you think of the e-commerce market now? In you know in Chile, you know uh, where you are now, you know how how's the e-commerce market there? Yeah, um, I've been working close, of course, with Latin America uh, market, uh, and usually for the foreign company, a European company, maybe Asian company or company for the United States, they will be hesitating if. Latin America is a good market or not for e-commerce. Okay. Because usually they compare the KPIs of uh, you know, Germany, France, United States, or Japan, or mm. other markets. I right? say, so, mm, those markets are doing an amazing job. They have a really good KPI, a uh, lot of uh, um, conversions, super good. But in Latin America, it's super poor. I mean, always it's kind of difficult. It's a yes. huge market, more than 300 million people, but it still is not in the, you know, mm -hmm. in the top of the way. But what happened that today, uh, during pandemic, because still the pandemic is here, like in so many countries uh, around the world, uh, there are so many people purchasing online. So uh, what I can say now, the potential always was here, always with the potential of the, the market. But today, the people is, have the will to pay online. They're not afraid because they don't have other choice, right? Because they're at home, uh, they have to purchase. And if you take a look, uh, everyone, uh, is, uh, people that following the, the subscribers of your channel or, or, or yourself as well, you take a look at the KPI, the metrics, and it's a huge boom. I mean, there is booming now in e-commerce. Uh, you are in the e-commerce arena, you are an expert in e-commerce, and I think that if one of your students or your colleague or friends ask you uh, which market I should try, I think Latin America is, is, a, is a great market today. And it keep growing and growing and growing. Uh, if you ask me what is the status today of e-commerce, we keep growing, the past is super fast. Uh, I think it's, a, it's amazing time to, to come here, came from Asia, I bring some products, and try to uh, make some good business in the region. Uh, are you a soccer fan? Uh, also. <laughs> uh, okay, so there's uh, the Copa you know, America now, which is uh, happening now together uh, concurrently with uh, Euro, right? Yeah, and I'm also watching as well. Uh, and uh, I think the part of, you know, this, this part of, um, you know, the world, it's a very interesting part because uh, I, I don't really have a lot of friends who are e-commerce seller or doing something related to e-commerce. So you are, you are one of them and uh, I'm very happy to know you and to learn more from you as well. Okay? Yeah, thank you. Um, I believe the pandemic changed a lot of things. Um, and um, you know, whenever we have a pandemic every time, we grew stronger, okay? Uh, over the years, you know, many, many years, centuries, Every time after the, you know, even, you know, all the, uh, the Spanish flu, all the big uh, pandemic, all the world became stronger. So had the pandemic changed the way people do e-commerce in your country as well? This is a good point you're saying, Andy. Uh, the people, I think, when you're in the middle of the pandemic or kind of a, a, an earthquake, you know, this kind of phenomenon that they're super... Uh, uh, super massive or super negative from the from the society point of view but at some point that you make it stronger because you have to find new ways 
how to make business or new ways how to survive. Uh, a big change in Latin America, for example, there are so many uh, companies just making business like uh, offline, like a face-to-face, you know, you go to the store, make the purchase and done. And they know, uh, they knew that, the, let's say, five, six years ago, e-commerce was starting growing and growing in Latin America, but they say, okay, let's do it later. E-commerce for now is, is fine. I mean, what is the percentage you want to have from, uh, from your sales of from, coming from e-commerce? Let's say they say, it's just 5%, 10%, right? Because, because they never think about it to invest time and resources in e-commerce. But when the pandemic appeared, and say, okay, now I have to keep selling, right? I have to uh, uh, still make money. I have to pay salaries and so on. And the people make it stronger the point of view, try to find new way how to make business. Think about, okay, now I cannot open my store. What I should do? I, the guy said, mm, now I remember that someone mentioned e-commerce, right? Uh-huh. Because yes, they have to, yes. have to Google it. I need to learn them about e-commerce. What happened with Amazon? How to sell products and blah, 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 right? And this is, this is a... This is the, one of the good things of the pandemic, right? Uh, for sure, everyone wants to have a, a normal life, no? back to a, a new normal, let's say. Yeah. Uh, but on in, in the, in the other side, I think the, the people start to think about it, how to keep improving. I mean, don't get in kind of the comfort zone and do nothing, right? Try to new way how to, to, to sell us and to kind of survive and somehow. If you're completely right, the, the people are getting more stronger, the society gets more stronger, I try to think more about the community, you know, uh, more kind of as a team, how to help each other. And I think e-commerce is a, is a good result, specifically for Latin America. I believe that maybe in your, in your region in Asia is something similar, but definitely Asia in terms of e-commerce is, is uh, kind of starting earlier than in Latin America, but still for sure in your region, uh, there are some uh, big changes, right? Just curious, um... In over in uh, Latin America, right? Um, are you guys doing more on uh, uh, pay per del- uh, pay upon delivery? That means uh, COD cash on delivery, or is you pay via credit card first? Because in Philippines, they, they are very into cash on delivery. Yeah, I think um, this is a good question for Latin America because, uh, for example, if someone from Philippines thinking about Latin America they have to think about it, that there are some plenty of options across Latin America. Yes. So that, this is kind of the first approach. In Latin America, there are this kind of uh, payment, this kind of uh, e-commerce system somehow, yes. but there as well, there are plenty of people paying just with credit card, or mm-hmm. there are plenty of people paying with PayPal, or there are people paying in cash, you know. This is yes. kind of a, a, mix, a, a mix across the region. Okay. So this is a, the goes approach, I think, for, for, for the people uh, close with e-commerce, when they start thinking about Latin America, try to put focus, but separated. I'd say Mexico, Brazil, Chile, Colombia, um, Peru, Argentina. And those countries, these are uh, six countries making around 80% of the business in Latin America. But those countries have different kind of uh, purchase behaviors. Let's say 80% of Chileans, they prefer we pay with credit card. Oh, okay. you know but in mexico is different you know in mexico i think the 30 to 40 percent they prepare uh, they prefer to pay in cash with cash payment and sure. brazil kind of a mix and okay. this is interesting thing connected with e-commerce you know the the purchase behaviors in latin america even where the same continent quite similar culture uh the purchase behaviors is different the people prefer to purchase in different ways you know i see thank you so much uh, for for coming up to my uh, YouTube channel to let us, uh, to let me interview you, and I hope that you know once the pandemic is over, I can see you in uh, Mike's event soon also again in China, uh, the global for, um, from Asia events. Um, also, um, if any one of you uh, is uh, interested to ask questions about Latin American, you know uh, how's the e-commerce market works and everything, you can leave a questions below my um, my YouTube uh, video. Uh, also, I will leave um, you know Christian um, his um, uh, his uh, email so that you can also contact him directly if you have any questions to ask him. And I, I think he will be happy to to to, yes. to answer. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, it's really our honor to to have you here today. Okay. And I uh, hope to Thank see you, you again soon. Thank you so much. Yeah. Bye. 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 Bye.